I'm Wayne, and welcome back to my Christian Observations podcast. I believe this is my episode number four. It's good to have you all here, and I'm here to remind you and encourage you to be the light. This podcast is about helping myself and others to discuss the Bible and learn the truths on how we can live this life in a way that God, well, I hope that he might approve of. I try to start each podcast off by reading Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. And of course, I read that because it's kind of a mantra that I try to tell myself each and every day as I pray. That is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be the light and to just shine all of his goodness on everybody else. Today we're going to discuss Luke 10, verses 25 through 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan, one of my favorites. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, him being Jesus, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But the lawyer, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, he gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And the lawyer said, He who showed mercy on him. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. So, as I like to do next in my podcast, I like to discuss the meaning of the parable. This one, of course, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Now, this is one of the most well-known parables in the Bible. And as I mentioned earlier, one of my favorites, one of the ones I like to teach and discuss the most. And I'll share with you a story in a few minutes, uh, which will make sense why I like it so much. It's a story told by Jesus in response to a question from a lawyer who asked, And who is my neighbor? parable illustrates several important moral and spiritual lessons, which we'll go over right now. As you've probably figured out, the central message of this parable is the importance of showing compassion to others. The Samaritan in the story, who is traditionally considered an outsider and an enemy by the Jewish people, goes out of his way to help a wounded man, even though it was an inconvenience to him. This demonstrates that true neighborly love transcends cultural, racial, and religious boundaries. Lesson number two, the all-popular love your neighbor. In response to the lawyer's question, who is my neighbor, Jesus implies that everybody is your neighbor. He challenges the narrow definition of neighbor and encourages us to extend our love and care for all, irrespective of their background or their circumstances. Lesson number three, religious hypocrisy. The parable also highlights the failure of the priest and the Levite, who were religious figures, to stop and help the wounded man. This serves as a warning against religious hypocrisy and the importance of living out one's faith through actions and not just through words. The Kingdom of God The story conveys the idea that the Kingdom of God is not just about religious rituals or affiliation, but about how one treats others with love and compassion. Of course, it suggests that living according to God's principles actually involves helping those in need. On mercy and grace. The Samaritan's actions are a symbol of God's mercy and grace. Just as the Samaritan showed mercy to the wounded man, God offers mercy and grace to humanity, regardless of our sins and our personal shortcomings. So in summary, the parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us to be compassionate, to love our neighbors as ourselves, 
to look beyond societal divisions, and to act on our beliefs by helping those in need. It challenges us to live out the principles of love, mercy, and grace in our daily lives and to be a good neighbor to all. Now, obviously, there's a lot of lessons to be learned through this parable, but we're going to run through the four key lessons and how we can apply those to one's life today. The first lesson is compassion and empathy. The meaning in the story emphasizes the Samaritan's compassion and his willingness to help a stranger, and in your life, strive to extend kindness and assistance to those who are suffering, regardless of their background or their circumstances. And the application is to cultivate a deep sense of compassion and empathy for others, especially those in need or distress. The second lesson that Jesus was trying to hit home was he was letting us know that we need to expand our definition of neighbor. The meaning, Jesus challenges the lawyer's question about who his neighbor is, implying that everybody is your neighbor. Apply this by treating everybody that you encounter with respect and care, irrespective of their age, their religion, their race, their nationality, or social status. And the application of loving your neighbor, broaden your definition of who your neighbor is to include all people regardless of differences. Now that could be the coworker that you don't really care for, or the nosy neighbor, or the people around the corner that play the music too loud and drive you crazy. Obviously, we don't all get along at all times, but that's no reason that we can't treat each other well, especially when in need. Key lesson number three is the practical acts of love. The meaning in the story was that the Good Samaritan didn't just feel sorry for the wounded man, but he took immediate action in helping him. You can apply this principle by volunteering, by supporting charitable causes, or simply helping those that you encounter who are in need. And the application of that is to translate your compassion into practical acts of love and service to those in need. And number four is overcoming prejudice and bias. Now the meaning in the story, the Samaritan helped a Jewish man even though there was historical animosity between the groups. Similarly, work to overcome biases and preconceptions that may hinder your ability to show love and kindness to others. And the application is to challenge and overcome your prejudices and your biases by acknowledging the humanity and worth of all individuals around you. Now, by applying these teachings from the parable of the Good Samaritan, you can cultivate a more passionate and inclusive mindset, actively engaging in acts of kindness and service, and work towards breaking down the barriers of prejudice and biases in your interactions with others. Ultimately, these principles promote a sense of community and a love for one's fellow human beings. Now, these four reflective questions can help you to deepen your understanding of the parable of the Good Samaritan and its relevance in your own life. Take the time for some self-examination and thoughtful consideration of how you deal with people on a daily basis who you might consider or maybe you never considered your neighbor before. Now, I wanted to share a personal story of why this is my favorite parable. And I currently work, I've worked now for about two and a half years with the homeless population in North Carolina. And up until I had this ministry job, the extent of me dealing with the homeless was probably the same as most of the people listening to this podcast. Occasionally, I'd pull up at a red light somewhere and there'd be somebody standing next to me with a sign who made me very uncomfortable to look at. I don't normally carry money with me because it's the, the age of debit card, so I didn't have or don't have any cash to give them. But occasionally, if I happen to see them and I was on my way to McDonald's, I may pick them up a Big Mac, or if they were really lucky, they might get $5 from me. Now, a Big Mac and a $5, that's not a bad score, but when we talk about how we're supposed to be as Christians and we reflect on the parable of the Good Samaritan, that doesn't even come close. That's just barely more than the priest and the Levite who literally just walked around them. Now, remember back to the beginning of the podcast where I read the scripture, the actual parable story, and the Samaritan did way more than just look at him or even slap a Band-Aid on him. He actually went down. He helped him. He tended to his wounds. He used his own goods. He used his oil. He used his cloth to bandage the man. And back then, of course, there was no motor vehicles, so he had probably a donkey with him. He put the man on the donkey, and then he walked next to the donkey for however long the journey may have been to get to that inn. When he finally made it to the inn, he checked himself and the wounded gentleman into the inn, continued to take care of him, 
and when he had to leave to go on to his business, he left more money with the innkeeper, asked the innkeeper to continue to take care of him, and when he passed back through, if he owed any more money, he would settle up with the innkeeper. Now, that's way more work and dedication, if we're honest, that most of us are willing to do. Because to go through all of that, you may actually have to stop and talk to the person, ask them what their needs are, figure out how you can help. Use some of your own personal money, your personal resources to help him do that or her do that. These are not easy things in the busy world that we're in. But the main problem with most of us in the world is that we're all focused on me, 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 and not our neighbors. So take the time, pull out your favorite Bible translation, reread the parable of the Good Samaritan, really pray over it, ask God what he might have you do differently in the future. And I'm not asking you to feel guilty about what you may or may not have done to people in the past. And there's always good times that you are able to do things and times when you can't and you've got to use your right judgment. And remember, there's no condemnation in Christ. However, Jesus makes it very clear how we're supposed to treat each other and the extent that we're supposed to go to to help others. Again, remember and reflect on the principles of love, mercy, and grace that God's given us in our daily lives, and remember to be a great neighbor to everybody around you. Well, that's all I've got for you today in this podcast as we work on living out our Christianity. And please remember that one day each of us will be present before the Lord, and we'll be waiting to hear one of two things from Him. Well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. Links to my podcast and social media, plus the full PDF transcription of this podcast, will be included in the description below. And don't forget that I personally believe that God himself would love for you to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend or two who might benefit, and I'll be posting more very soon. Peace.